Agretsuko is an anime. I still haven't watched the second season of that. Oh, there's a second season? Yeah, it just came out, oh. but I have not played it, so I have no idea what it's like. You haven't played the season? I played it. I've not played it on my TV with the play button. Oh. So there we go. It Hello. makes sense. Welcome to episode 19? 19, yes. Yeah, yeah, check this one. Woo! Episode 19 we're of Game Punks. Uh, we're back to a weekly schedule. Yeah, oh, for sure. And we're, I, I was going a little nuts because I, I kept wanting to do it, but we never <laughs> planned it, really. <laughs> And I was like, ah, no, we need to, we need to put our foot down. We need to get going. Well, I have this room. The room will be better next time. Oh, this I, is still good. Yeah, but it's still good. But this and is, I'm, I'm satisfied with the setup. Uh, we're back in the same room, which is good. Yes. Uh, because there will be no fun. delays, and there's less delays, and the editing is will be bitch. so much easier for yeah. you now. Oh, oh my god, so much so. Um. So yeah, we're we're going back to the weekly schedule. Um, Thank God for that. RSS feed is actually coming up real soon. Ah! Uh, in Rising maybe a month. Rising streamer feed. <laughs> Shut up. In maybe a month. Oh, that'll uh, be good. So we'll uh, be on RSS if you guys need a sub to hear when a new episode yeah, comes. Yeah, you can listen that'll to us thing. on Spotify when that happens. Yeah, that'll be good. Yeah, it'll be the best. It'll be so fucking convenient I hate to watch you listen to, to us. I hate listening to podcasts on YouTube. Yeah, so oh my god. I, I get it's the hell. struggle. I get yeah. the struggle. It fucking drives me nuts. I, I have all my shit on, on I have all my shit on Podbean. So yeah. I, I just have my Podbean app That's and it. I listen to it all the, from there. The for that, so. Yeah, exactly. Uh, unfortunately, we might only have a uh, pick up from the episode that we have the RSS for until we can get a bigger bandwidth and then dump them all and then resubscribe to a normal bandwidth. But yeah, but it'll be fine for now. Yeah. I mean, we, I mean we've literally made, we've made do with nothing yeah, so far. Going, so. going backwards in these episodes doesn't really matter anyway because it's all news. Yeah. And, like, and just yeah. conversational shit anyway. Yeah. So it's not like you're really going to have to struggle with back episodes or whatever. Yeah. It's, it's going to be old news either way. We're not a themed podcast with like weekly topics no. that'll actually actually get people to want to go and listen to back episodes. We're anyway. current. Exactly. We're staying modern. And good. Uh, I'm just looking up a thing. Oh, yeah, because there is news. September 5th. All right, so. It's a national holiday. Yeah, September 5th <laughs> is a national holiday. Uh, River City Girls is coming out, uh, and we're going to do a stream for that. Mm -hmm. Because. Because it looks really fun, and it is the best game are. to play co-op. Yeah. I cannot uh, wait. Kyoko is voiced by my gal, uh, Kira Buckland, who Ooh. also voiced 2B. Oh shit, really? Yeah. Okay, that's awesome. Uh, she voiced 2B and like she voiced, uh, fuck, I forget her name, but the ghost at the end of part four in JoJo. Yeah, 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 okay. Um, yeah, her. And a bunch of other anime characters and stuff, uh, so shit. I'm excited for that. That's gonna be fucking um, awesome. Her move list looks cool because she has a fucking Blanca ball and she has a dab attack. Yes, the dab so attack, the is, attack is, is fucking awesome. The still of that frame is my favorite fucking thing right now. But, it's terrific. And um, I like Misako because she is a daughter. Real. She is a daughter. Real. She's like because the perfect, they're children. They are children. They're not white. <laughs> Fuck God, no, they are not. But um, uh, yeah, no, that that game looks fucking awesome. I cannot wait to play River City Girls. Yeah, and we're gonna rescue our husbandos. Oh yes, uh, I can't wait for that. That's gonna be so fucking good. Um, yeah, so uh, I guess we will go into our weeks like a normal podcast. Yeah, and then we'll hit news. It's not too much that I dumped. No, exactly. Uh, but we can check real quick. There has been any there have been games that I've played. New things. Uh, so how was uh, how was your? I guess there was like a three week gap, right? Yeah, basically so, three week gap. Well, I. Because I had a lot of free time in the evenings and I've, I've shifted to a new work schedule, I have more time to do game stuff in general. So I started out with uh, playing Hero in Smash. Oh, uh, yeah. How is he as so, OP as everyone says he is? I, Australia banned him like cow. Uh, all I have to say about Hero is, firstly, any character is OP if the person playing that character is, a, is an excellent player. Yeah, it's I I, mm. I I think the new Smash game is honestly one of the most balanced fighters I've ever played. 
because it's pretty based on the kind of fighting game Smash is versus your typical fighting game being a party fighter, it's a lot less reliant on knowing a character's move list and more reliant on knowing how to best utilize the character in a particular environmental situation. Yeah. So honestly, if you're an intuitive and talented enough player, you could play hero like a master. But if you're not good with the character, you're gonna you're be not gonna be good. Ass yeah. Because he he plays kind of like a mix of Shulk and Robin. Yeah. In that he's got that thing that Shulk has with his Monado arts where he can switch to different buffs. Where he he's got a, an RPG drop down menu that comes up and you can yeah, cycle yeah, through yeah. buffs and debuffs. I saw that. that which is really, really dope. cool. But he's got magic and swords like Robin. So he reminds me of kind of a mix of the two in that you're you're managing your buffs and debuffs while you're also having kind of like a twofold manner of dispatching your opponents. Mm -hmm. So he's a really convenient character to play as. I'd say the hardest thing getting used to with him was kind of like Shulk using the magic, yeah. using the buffs and stuff like that. But I've it's enjoyed my to learn. Yeah, I've enjoyed my time with him so far. I I really love that. You can just shift the skin to different fire, uh, different fire emblem, different Dragon Quest protagonists, because I fucking love Dragon Quest, and they chose some great characters. They chose the protagonist from four, the protagonist from three, uh, Erdrick, um, the protagonist from eleven, and, and the eight? protagonist from eight, which yeah. is my favorite game in the series. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I think I think that's a very common uh, thing too. Is like a lot of people really fucking like eight. I Dragon love Quest it. is a series that I have not played ever. Really? Um, ever at all? Never ever. Oh maybe, shit. Maybe like in my youth. Maybe uh, like at a really, friend's yeah, house. Okay, when you were really but young. like I never owned it. I've never beaten one. Uh, they actually have a copy down at the game store right down the street that I've been kind of eyeballing. Uh, so I was thinking of picking that up. But okay. also my two playlist is... Is way too long so already. Fucked right now. Yeah. So I'm also just thinking of like wiki diving it maybe a bit because that wouldn't be a bad is, idea. There is some media that you just you gotta you gotta wiki dive. This can go lower. Yeah. I don't care about that. Yeah. Um. <laughs> yeah, we're not gonna. <laughs> no. Sorry. Just, just fucking this Discord. I swear to God. <laughs> But, uh, yeah, the, the coolest thing about Dragon Quest as a series is that throughout all the time that it's existed, it is, like, the quintessential JRPG yeah, series yeah, yeah. to me. I mean, Japan I, shuts down yeah, every Even time. more so than Final Fantasy, I think it perfectly defines what the JRPG as a genre is, and what it encompasses in all of its different iterations. The meat of the gameplay has stayed pretty much unchanged, except for quality of life improvements. yeah. But um, of all the games in the series that I've played, I've played four, which is a very interesting game, and we could go in on that, but I won't, because it would take a long time. Yeah. Uh, I've played four, I've played seven, I've played eight, uh, and I've played ten and eleven. I could play a couple, and we could do a uh, bonus round specifically dedicated to That would be so Dragon fun, Quest, because I, I love those games. Yeah. The coolest thing about Dragon Quest, I think in terms of the... I guess the, the the general appeal of the series to me is the aesthetic. It's classic Western fantasy, uh, but the artwork is entirely done by Akira Toriyama, Dragon Ball fame. So it oh, has a really, really yeah. The art for Dragon Quest is Akira Toriyama. All of it? always for all of the games okay. forever. Well, that makes sense because yeah. uh, I think it's the protag for eight. He gives me big big. Uh, Goku vibes. Oh yeah, no, no. That's I think you're thinking of the one for three. Uh, He's the one yeah. who looks like basically yeah, like Goku in a suit of armor, okay, in like a tunic. But um, yeah, that's yes. I think that's Verdre. Why? Why do I think it's eight? Uh, eight's the one with the bandana. That's the one that I really like. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. And fucking the newest one just looks like Trunks. Like yeah, he does. He does straight <laughs> up look like Trunks. Uh, but yeah, Dragon Quest as a series is really great. So. And, yeah, Japan as a country is fucking obsessed with Dragon Quest. It's been a, a cultural phenomenon there ever yeah, since the first game came out. So much so that laws around the release dates of games had to be shifted. It has to be just on, so like, that, weekends. Yeah. On just, Sundays. On Sundays, yeah. Just so that fucking salary men don't bunk off from their jobs to go and buy the new one when it comes out. Because you know we will. But it's such a fantastic series, and seeing it get representation in Smash, I think 
first of all, my was favorite, inevitable. My favorite it was, inevitable. was that at E3, that trailer came on, and the cr- I'm like, I got hyped. I got fucking Dragon hyped. Price. Yeah, all like a bunch of weebs got hyped, but the general crowd was just kind of like, oh, another sword boy. What the fuck is, what is that? This bullshit. And then Banjo comes, and everyone loses their shit. I also lost my shit for Banjo. I was not expecting that at all. I think it's cool. Uh, but I popped way harder for uh, Dragon Quest. I, when I saw Dragon Quest, I said, this is a decision made explicitly in the interest of me. Now, when do we <laughs> get Sora? Yeah, I really want that to happen, but that's I don't Sora. think it will. Dante's coming, though. I think that that's inevitable. Yeah. I, w- yeah. The, the only reason yeah. it makes sense at all to have the, the, the two, first game come back The two that the I am Switch. almost nearly certain will Dante's be coming out. Dante and Shantae. Shantae? Because Shant- I think Shantae will Shantae, be a trophy assist. The, it's kind of in the same vein as Shovel Knight, right? The thing is, though, no. No, Shantae, Shantae is, is an old Game Boy color. Color. Yes, it's true. Uh, that original Shantae I game on Game a, Boy is yeah. a fucking amazing I just had a flash to, I think that uh, might be one of the best games on that console. Yeah. On the Game Boy Color, for sure. Because, yeah, I just had a flash to a Nintendo Power from, like, Early 2000s. Yeah, probably the 2002 game. when yeah. the game came out. Yeah. And that uh, game came out in 2002. The Game Boy Color was still around in 2002. Yeah. It was the year before the Game Boy Advance came out. And that was one of the last ever games to be released for the system. And it is still one of the best platformers ever made for a handheld. I remember console. being like, it's fantastic. Game, but never, yeah. never. So she's an it. old guard Nintendo character that I don't think people understand. Is and there have been yeah because the revival was throughout. like twenty years later yeah. almost man okay twenty is an exaggeration well two thousand twelve I think yeah which is like ten ten years later since the since the first one came and out I but, yeah feel like way forward did an amazing job with they have those games. all of those games have been great so far and the shift from the pixel art to the to the, the hand drawn animated sprites TV, like. I don't know how I feel about that because I think Shantae is nearly defined by its beautiful pixel yeah. graphics. But I mean, but also in an era where every indie game has beautiful pixel yeah, graphics, it. setting it as setting it aside even more and having like a gorgeous hand drawn animated sprites is a step in the right direction. I think yeah. for the aesthetics of the series. Anyway, Shantae I think is going to happen. Dante, I think for sure, Dante has to, to happen. It, it has to happen. It's the only reason that they would port yeah. Devil May Cry yeah. One to the Switch. Yeah, for, like because no There's, one asked no, for that. Nobody honestly even gives a shit about DMC One anymore. Really, no. But, DMC Five came out. Who cares? But because the Switch can definitely run DMC One. Yeah, yeah. That's They're why like, they are putting it. We out. can't. We can't get DMC Five on the Switch. So get DMC One. So we yeah. can get Dante. We've I'm seen so what fucking Mortal Kombat fucking list. Eleven looks His like. DT. His DT is gonna be good. Oh I my assume God, that'll be his final cool. smash. Um, he better have a stinger. He will. He will. He needs uh, you know, a stinger that goes into Million Sword Stab. That's what I want. I I feel like Million Sword Stab might be like his final smash. <sighs> no, uh, it would be a shitty final smash. Yeah, because it's just a stinger. It's a follow up move to the stinger, right? So, oh, well, maybe he'll have a three move combo like Cloud. Where Cloud has... Yeah, s- s- yeah he's got the yeah. cross. Yeah. S- uh, maybe. I don't know. I I want his Final Smash to be a DT. Because if it's DMC1 Dante, then it would make sense for his Final, s- final Smash to be a DT because they could do it like uh, Fox's. Because yeah. the end of DMC1 is just kind of a Star Fox level. That's true. Right. Um, do you think that they'll give him alternates for all of his different appearances? Or maybe just I feel like that's the most recent appearance. And I feel like that's hoping for a bit much, but at the same time, with what they did for Hero... I mean, it, Hero's got a totally, bunch of skins. Yeah. Cloud can be Advent Children Cloud. I want a Virgil. Like, uh, a Virgil alternate. skin? Yeah, like, oh, like an Echo Fighter? Yeah. That'd be cool. Or at least an alternate costume in Virgil's colors. Yeah. For sure. Well, that for sure, but I'd like a reskin, but that's probably... probably that, that'd be I, awesome. I feel like I'm asking for too much. Maybe. But anyway... I mean, poor, poor Sakurai needs to sleep. And then we can finally have Dante versus Bayo matches. Yeah, that's gonna be fucking awesome. The um, Kamiya fight. Yeah, and then and then Sakurai can sleep for ever now. Five years. He can go to bed. What, what was the interview where he's like, "I'm so tired." I don't remember, but all I know is that the dude literally had an IV drip going while yeah, playing the game. Is. So the band needs his rest, like. Hopefully Did his wrists ever recover from Kid Icarus? 
I doubt it. I don't think so. I don't think he, he just has carpal tunnel for life. Yeah. But anyway, so I played Hero and I really like playing as him. I've been playing more Tales of Vesperia. Uh, I've gotten a little deeper into it. Oh, I'm, yeah, I'm starting great. to get a lot of... I'm starting to get to the point in the game where a lot of the party members are coming in and out uh, pretty consistently. But um, I've started really... I've, I've started getting into more, like I guess, the depths of the battle system. And I've started letting the game play automatically, too, which is fun. Mm-hmm. I, I never, When I play Tales games, I almost never shed it to auto-battle. Yeah, because it feels cheap. It, it feels cheap But at the weird. same time, it just does what you were doing. Yeah, but so. the thing is, now that I've kind of fully gotten into organizing my party and, like... Uh, like customizing their move sets to suit like the most advantageous battle strategies and shifting between auto battle strategies, which is really yeah. cool. I've actually started really enjoying setting it to auto battle. Um, and I, yeah, so I've gotten some of the other characters in my party. Raven joined my party very briefly and now he's just kind of in it. He's got a shifting bow and arrow and sword, but he's also, he's, he kind of plays like a spell fencer, I guess. But he's got ranged abilities too. He's a little bit of a ranger, a little bit of a spell fencer. Okay. But I enjoy having him because if you have more pugilistic characters in your party, he'll stand aside and he'll cast. Yeah. But uh, when it's time to go into the kill, he's like a really efficient hand-to-hand fighter too. So I like having him. I've gotten Patty, who she's kind of like a baby character. Like she's a little pirate girl. And she's got a gun and she's got a knife. But... um. I, I don't really include her in my party. She's okay. She's very mediocre. Fair enough. Um, but uh, yeah, I've, I've, some of the newer characters coming in and out, I've, I've enjoyed having them in there and kind of seeing what they what they can do and what they can't do. Yeah. I feel like Vesperia has like maybe less party balance across the characters than some of the previous Tales games had. So like I, there's clear Yeah, there's clear characters who you want and there's yeah. some that you can. I mean, Yuri is always going to be on your team because he's the main character but you also pretty much always want to spell because she's really the only character who can use healing arts. Yeah. And you want her, you want to heal I'm getting yeah. kind of the same vibe from Final Fantasy VII because yeah. I've been streaming that and it's like why would you not have Aerith and Tifa? I don't have all the characters yet, I know. Uh, but he, it, yeah, I'll tell you who my usual party setup for that yeah. game is. I usually have I know Cloud. everyone who shows I usually have Cloud, of course. I usually have Red 13, and I usually have Tifa. Doesn't Red 13 bounce? The thing is He says he's going to. So that's where I am. I he, just he I just does, but he comes right go. back. I mean, oh really? Yeah. Okay. I mean that that's another game where your well, party is constantly s- shifting anyway. Fine. See, that's Red 13 was one of my picks, but he was like, oh, I'm just going to leave. So I was like, okay, yeah. well, fuck that. I'm not going to even level He, he comes right back. Comes right so, back. all right, fine. All That's I fine. mean, by the end of the game, all of everybody's there. Yeah. Everybody's there. So it's, it, well, except for one notable. <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> I mean. One notable individual was not. Yeah. But uh, the Man, rest of them are. I'm so mad that Sephiroth won't join your team at all. <laughs> He's a bastard. You don't want him on your team anyway. He's a baby. Matt, that song is so good. Yeah, fucking One Winged Angel yeah. is one of the best Same. fucking songs. I actually, when I was taking my music course at McGill a couple, like two semesters ago or whatever, uh, my teacher uh, started talking about video game composers at the end of the course, like when we got into contemporary composition. Yeah. But he wasn't aware of Lematsu, so I sent him a really beautiful version of One Winged Angel from one of the uh, concerts. Yeah, the, the and concerts. he was like, this is quite possibly one of the most incredible pieces of music. He's from, yeah. he was from North <laughs> Carolina. One of the most incredible pieces of music I've ever heard composed for like a video game. It's it's fantastic. Were you like buddy strapping? It's so have awesome. you ever heard like, of yeah. Kingdom Hearts? This 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 man Nobuo Uematsu has made many many positive contributions to the realm of video game composition. Yeah. But it nearly pales in comparison to Yoko Shimomura. <laughs> and uh, fucking oh god, I forget his name, but the composer for Nier. Oh, oh fuck. Nier Automata the, is. I, I'm going to bring it up for multiple co- podcasts for sure, but I think it's one of my fucking favorite games ever made. Yes. It's incredible. Oh my god. It's, it's really I can't fantastic. wait for Nier Automata 2. <laughs> I, 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 I don't know if that... I hate that sentence. I don't know if that's going to happen. No, it won't. <laughs> I beat the game. But um, I'm sure there will be a third Nier. 
Oh, at any rate. Yoko Taro is Yoko Taro a one-way ticket here forever. to... Uh, I mean, he's certainly not making another drinking guard. <laughs> <laughs> that would be cool, though. It would be cool, but I, guy, I, don't, yeah. I don't feel like I'm nostalgic for the gameplay but if of Square Drake Enix, But if Square Enix and Platinum take over the reins of Drake Guard 4... That would be okay. It could work. Yeah, it could, it work. could work. It could be fucking perfect. Switching Drake and Guard to be more character action oriented would be an interesting it would be direction. Sick. Yeah. I love it. It'd be cool. Uh, but I think I think he's locked into Nier now. Nier, Nier Drake Nier and Guard is honestly was such a an set up little piece of fucking art. Drake and Guard yeah. was a setup for Nier. Drake and Guard is the the hand job before the. Fucking and you know what? I wouldn't even. I wouldn't even be surprised if the next Yoko Taro game has fuck all to do with Nier and is just a whole new. Universe that sprung off of one. Yeah, of I suppose it could be hard to top Automata. Because I mean, if you just well, you got Drake and Guard, right, and yeah. that kind of turned into a thing, and Drake the end one of the, the ending for Drake and Guard three is a set up pretty cool almost pretty cool yeah. for for here, but like a bajillion years after that happens. No, exactly. Because he time travels through the portal, and then he's in the fucked up city, and that's yeah. the fucked up city. Do you start it in here? Uh, and then Nier sets up for Automata. I could maybe see one more Nier game, and then maybe he'd be like, I'm done with this universe. We're yeah. Moving on. I feel like a trilogy of Nier games is, is in his interest. God, I mean, is, but is, I, Autobi- is this autobiography? Oh, yeah. It wasn't. I don't think it is. It wasn't last time I checked. But Mr. Yoko Toru. Yoko Ono, my favorite. The Strange Works of Oh, Taro God. I need to get this right now. Is that a. Uh, I think that's a. It's a hardcover text. Uh, throughout his entire career. Um, oh, it's it's a philosophical text. It's like near and philosophy, one of those sort of things. Yeah, I think that's so. cool. I read one of those of uh, one of those this and philosophy books on uh, I think the His Dark Materials. Yeah, so that's a series loaded with that kind of stuff. I also want these near books. Oh um, yeah, that's pretty good. It's a lot of fucking near stuff. What? Yeah. That's a dumb shit. That it's that, just a cup with Yoko Taro making finger guns with his a mill hat. That's so great. Head. Ah, uh, okay. Maybe but that's, um, just, that's not my beer. That's but the yeah. Uh, it would be pretty cool to see him round out near with a trilogy and then move on to something else. Yeah, I'd like that. I mean, a, a trilogy is an okay place to stop. I feel I feel like four is kind of embarrassing because mm. it's that point where it's like. Like, if 4 or 5, if you make it to 6, that's when you're in the clear, but 4 and 5 are that gray zone of numbered sequels. Yeah. Where you're kind of like, mm. I mean... Unless you're Stranger Things, then Stranger Things should have ended in 1. Fight oh, me. Fight I me. agree, bro. I agree. I will not fight you on that. Did you finish Stranger Things 3? I didn't even bother, honestly. Don't. I, 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 did, I did watch something else, though. I did watch another streaming series, and I, I also couldn't get through it. But for reasons other than it sucked. Because uh, I did... Um, so I, I've been watching a lot of TV lately. Yeah. Uh, because I've had time, which is nice. Uh, I've been watching Young Justice, and I'm really enjoying it. Yeah, you've been posting uh, on Twitter a lot about it. Let me, I guess I'll talk about that for a second. So Young Justice is a show that I was really reluctant to watch. Because I, I think when, I, when it came out in like 2014... I was like 17, 18 years old, and I was You're just like, like fuck this. I was like, fuck this edgy bullshit. Like, I was Alex, so Alex is super salty too, yeah. by the way. I was so. He brings it up like once a week. I was so fucking uninterested in engaging with it. I don't know why I had such a viscerally negative reaction to it. You were in your edge phase. I. Okay, I when I was imagine. in that age range, I dropped anime and video games, like, all wow, together, because I was like, this is nerdy bullshit. So I have, like, a two-year gap of being like, oh, no, that's for children. I'm a big man, adult man. I like, feel like that's... I think the reason I disliked it is because I I couldn't get into the interpretation of the DC universe that it was. Yeah. I think I was, I was still really stuck in... Batman Land? Not Batman Land, because Batman's never been my favorite character. Happy I was really stuck in Superman Land, actually. Because oh, yeah. I had just watched Superman, the animated series, and in my opinion... That is one of the best cartoon series of all time. I only remember the Batman vs. Superman movie where they never actually fight. They fight for two seconds. Yeah, they fight for two seconds. And then they fight Lex Luthor and the Joker. But I was... I'm I'm a Justice League fan, first and foremost. I'm a fan of these characters working as a team. And 
I'm a fan of them working together and kind of being friends. And I felt like the confrontational nature and attitude of the people in the team, like yeah. the Young Justice team and in the league, kind of upset me and made me kind of like, but I want them to be friends. And I just thought they were kind of doing it to to force to conflict in you. <laughs> well, to, to kind of contrive a reason for there to be conflict within the, sh the show, apart from conflict with the antagonists. Yeah. Uh, as somebody who then spent the next three years writing film essay after film essay every week and getting a deck in medium communication studies, I only realize now how fucking stupid I was. This show is brilliant. It it's does the good thing. It's extremely well constructed. It's one of the most meticulously well written and well realized interpretations of the DC universe I've ever seen. In and it's almost better than the comics in so yeah. many fucking well, ways. That's what I was gonna say. I was like, I I can only imagine that the confrontational nature of the actual show kind of dissipates after. A yeah. Bit, yeah. Right? Totally. Like, there's totally. If you get shoved into a team with a bunch of fucking people, you're going to be kind yeah. of standoffish at first. And I mean, it, there's always room for that in the first episode. I think what peed me off was was that, like, like consi that. consistently it was always Superboy going, we an evil man who's angry. Mm. And I'm like, okay, fucking Matt. Stop it, fucking Lord. He's voiced by Nolan North. He, sound, oh, God, he, really? sound, he sounds like Nolan North doing a Sasuke impression. And... I was just like, shut the fuck up, Sasuke. But, like, I'm also just at an age now where my understanding of writing and media is a lot more well-rounded and developed, literally honed by three years of writing nonstop about it. Yeah. So, I... I just... I'm in the right headspace now to enjoy the show. And I, I so have. It's been great. I'm on season three now, which is the, the revived season. The season that's just begun on the DC streaming service and so far it has been nothing but impressive um I can get more into it in another week once we get a little deeper yeah but uh that's just kind of some of the stuff I've been watching but I also started watching and then promptly dropped The Boys which is this new Amazon streaming series it's a superhero series I've heard about it apparently it's it's, it's well I'll say first and foremost it is good yeah. In fact, it's it's great. It has I, it's way better than it has any right to be. Mm -hmm. My, I've heard that it was better than the comics. Oh, totally. I I I like Garth Ennis. Yeah, I like his comics. Yeah, I like Pre I like Preacher. Yeah, I I like the boys even to an extent. The comic, but Garth Ennis is the kind of guy who just writes really intense stuff. Oh, uh, so it's like heavy, heavy. It's just the boys comic. It's one thing seeing it in a comic seeing it and it's and arguably the show is toned down but yeah. seeing that level of ultra violence in a show was just so unpleasant for me yeah. and i i just i had to stop after one or two episodes okay i, I like ultra yeah. violent things like mandy i think is one of my favorite movies ever i feel but like i don't know if there's it's a the there's context, a difference right? between the that, conflict in mandy which is existential yeah. And the conflict, it's, it's literally humans fighting for survival. Yeah. Whereas the conflict in the boys is living in a depressive, fasc like essentially neo fascistic United States where the most powerful and most fascist people are people with incredible superpowers yeah. who are just super rapists, super murderers, super racists, nice. super xenophobes. I'm Great. like, this is already kind of. A really horrific mirror to our own yeah, reality. Yeah, yeah. I don't know if this is what I want to watch right now. I, and it is, it's not about them as protagonists. Yeah, no, These are the antagonists. The main characters are a group of vigilantes who are expressly out to take out and kill the these fucking super oppressors. Yeah. I might like that though. Because I, I do like very depressing medias too. It's it was just a little too heavy for me. And I it's the, I think it's the first time I've ever dropped. Any piece of media for being too heavy. Uh, I remember uh, me and the missus were actually watching Highlander. Uh, Highlander? Highlander, the movie with Netflix. No, Netflix. Swords? What is it? Netflix. Anyway, it's about this guy. I don't remember what it's called. Okay. It's a show. It's not the Highlander. It's not Highlander. No, no, no. Highlander is the... It, but it's in the same Scottish band people. with Scottish people and like... But anyway... Uh, this girl time travels back to the past okay. in the Highlander time, okay. right? which is why yeah. I'm okay. going to call it the Highlander, in, but it's not the, the Highlander. The yeah. uh, you know what? I'm going to actually Google it. 
Uh, but oh, I think I've heard about this. Anyway, she yeah, she goes back and she falls in love and like it, she's just kind of there forever now. Okay. And a bunch of shit happens, but like at some point it just turns into like rape fetishization. The rape show. Yeah, where yeah. like one of the uh, the male like protagonist is what was that show called? Yes, please. Thank you. What was that show called? The the rape show that we stopped watching because oh all the racists. Oh my god, Outlander. Outlander. Outlander, not Highlander. Thank Outlander. you. Outlander. Yeah. Uh, okay, so yeah. Not so we were watching that, and then well, so essentially one of the 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 main male uh, protagonists gets captured by the main male antagonist. Okay. And he's in a dungeon, and it just turns into like. Uh, well, he gets saved, but then he just has PTSD flashbacks uh -huh. and like very detailed. Like, like here's the general the scene. Part. The scene goes on oh, way Jesus too, Christ. way too fucking long, and it comes back like constantly. Like there's okay. episodes dedicated to just like, like multiple episodes, and we were like, "Fuck this! I can't deal with this." Yeah, that's this just is... that's that's a level of gratuity that yeah, like, put me off. It, it kind of in the same way. Well, okay, good. It's, it's a very harsh. Comparison, but it's the same reason I dropped Goblin Slayer. Where like you <laughs> can have rape scenes, but just don't make it like I this, feel like you know? the the rape scenes in Goblin Slayer were specifically like drawn and animated and to, be hyper to be hyper sexualized to titillate perverts. Like yeah. it's really disgusting. And like you have you have uh, shows like Psychopaths that one of like the first episodes is a rape. Yeah, is yeah. a rape, and. It's well executed. It's, it's handled it's well executed. respectfully, and it's not sexualized. It's well executed in the sense that it also shows you how this universe is problematic in the sense that the woman who is now suffering from PTSD also has to be murdered because yeah. she uh, is off the chart. Yeah, and if you if you fall too heavy on one side of this emotional spectrum, they used to judge your like sanity. Yeah, then you gotta get put down. Then you gotta get put the fuck down. So it's so it's a narrative it's, it's a narrative exactly. plot point that serves a purpose really well. Yeah. And honestly, had the Outlander done it in a way that was like maybe one little like section of an episode yeah. to be like, this is why I'm all fucked up, but it just keeps going back like, to if, it. If you as a creator need to establish that sexual assault is a consequence or action that can take place in the fictional universe that you are presenting to your audience. Which is a general yeah. thing that can happen. It like, happens. It's, and there's, it's not saying yeah. don't do it. It's saying do it, do it, do it tactfully. Way, do it in a way where maybe it doesn't take over the whole narrative. Yeah. Don't, or is it hypersexualized? Don't, don't do it to titillate your fucking audience. Nobody in your audience except for the very worst people who you don't want to appeal to are watching it for the rape. Yeah. So if you can go less gratuitous on that, the better. Nobody needs to buy that. The oh, but it was bad. That's why we censored the film. Rape people know it's bad. Always. Yeah, you don't. The people who don't think it's bad are the ones you're pandering. To. Yeah, don't fucking pander. It's to like them. fucking lowly shit. It is. Yeah, straight up. It's and straight I, up. I, oh, I hate. Anyway, whatever. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, so the boys. I found it just a little too intense. Mind yeah. you, it's got a great cast. Carl Urban is in it. He's yeah, really good. I saw that. Um, Simon Pegg's in it as the main character's father. He's rather good. It's written by Seth Rogen and produced by him, I think. Shit. And Evan Goldberg. Okay. Uh, which Preacher also was, the Preacher yeah. TV show. That's another Garth Ennis comic adaptation. Okay. I think Seth Rogen really likes Garth I mean, Ennis. I'm going to have to check out The Boys. I'll come back with uh, an evaluation, I guess, yeah. to see if it was too much for me. But I, I just personally found it a little too unrepentant. Yeah. But... And it's not to say that it's bad. In fact, it's, it is rather good. It's just a little too much for me. Fair enough. Maybe when I'm in a better headspace or something, I can come back to it and I can work my way through that shit. Yeah. But I, I mean, just it wasn't, like it wasn't pleasant. Like, I dropped off Breaking Bad because of the uh, drug addiction bit, right? Yeah. I mean, like, it's not a bad representation of it. No, it's, it's just, it, it's sometimes just, it hurts too good. Yeah, right? it's like, it, it's too close to home and I don't need this... Yeah. In my life right now. Yeah, it's that, I exactly. So I feel like maybe, maybe in a couple of years I'll come back to it. But I don't know, the superhero media I like to consume, typically rape is not a component of it. Yeah. You know, it's, that's, it's, it's, I'm not reading comics to see characters get sexually assaulted. I'm not yeah. watching comic media to see that happen. Uh, apart from all that pleasant stuff, uh, I have been playing more of Pokemon, um, uh, what is it called? Pokemon Prism? The uh, the ROM hack? 
It's a it's a ROM hack made from the ground up on Pokemon Crystal, and I've really enjoyed it so far. It's probably the best Pokemon ROM hack I've ever played. Is it the best Pokemon game you've ever played? Not even white place. and black still. Yeah, black and white and black and white two are still the best Pokemon games ever made, without even a doubt. Uh, but yeah, what I really like the most about it is that um, it starts you off with a Larvitar, so your starter is a Larvitar. Yeah. And you can completely customize your player's appearance, which is dope. Uh, I, uh, okay, I was going to say, I wish Pokemon games would let you do that, but they kind of do now, but not really. Like, I wish they would let you customize in the start. Yeah, and Anyways, you've yeah, got wanna... this entire... See that? There's, like, this yeah, entire map. map that you can explore that's, like, five regions put into one. Yeah, that So looks... it's a big game. That looks like blue, gold, and then, like... A yeah, blue. what it is is it's Kanto and Johto, and then Toonod, which is, like, a region... That is in a game called Pokemon Glazed, which is a pretty famous and well known Okay, so it's like an OC and then, region? Yeah, and then the one that you're in is um, Naljo, and there's also Region? They are they have bad names, the but Region? They have, they have stupid You're in the Region region. Stupid fake names. Yeah. But they it's since it's in the style of like the Game Boy Pokemon games, they can afford to be a little shittier looking. But they're still beautiful. Like, I like how they look. I like the geography of the map. I like how it plays. I like the addition of, like, Gen, up to Gen 7 Pokemon even in it, which is cool. Um, so it's an enjoyable game, uh, but I've been having a good time with it. It's fun. Um, apart from that, I I was watching something else. So I can't feel like I can remember. Ah, Ruby. I'm rewatching all of Ruby. And I'm oh, enjoying myself yeah. immensely because I love that show. Did you see a... Uh... One of the characters from Ruby got announced for Blaze Blue yeah. Cross Tag yeah. at Evo. Neapolitan. I was like, Ryan will probably like that. I was very excited. I was like, hey, it. it's Saren Kagura Girl, but that, not, not the one I like. So. That game is kind of not good, but I do not think you can play as Ruby Cross Tag. Uh, yeah. I mean, as far as fighters go, it's it's an Arxis game, so it's you kind of get what you pay for, but it's not one of the higher tier ones. Well, that's it. I mean, Arxis is good. But they got some misses too. I uh, I remember I don't remember if I talked about it last episode, but I touched the Kill a Kill I F demo. Uh, there's stuff there. It's kind of fun, but I don't really. It's not. It's not going to be the new Dragon Ball Fighters. The yeah. new Dragon Ball Fighters is going to be that game? guilty gear. Kill yes. Kill yeah, it's a fighting. It's game. a fighting game. It's a arena fighter, kind of kind of Budokai s. Oh, okay. When I think arena fighters now, I'm always thinking of fucking uh, JoJo. Which one? The JoJo fighting game. Not Eyes Over Heaven, the other one. All-Star yeah. Battle? Yeah, All-Star Battle. Yeah, I'm always thinking of All-Star Battle. When uh, I think Arena Fighter. That's unfortunate for you. Yeah, I give it <laughs> There's some good Arena Fighters. That, that game isn't good. But Eyes of Heaven is good, though. Yeah, it is. Is that is that also an Arena Fighter? Uh, I don't know. I just heard that it was good. Uh, okay. I'm ordering it soon to figure out what it is. So right. go to my friend's house. Well, be but I have to. I have to finish reading the JoJo's first because mm. apparently it's very. It is. It yeah. goes into seven. It, it's enti- I watched the Let's Play of it. Yeah. It's entirely. It goes entirely up to what, seven? Up to eight. Up to eight. Yeah. It's not done. I know. <laughs> what does that mean? It goes all the way up to eight. Ugh. Fuck. But um, anyway, it's it's pretty good. I like it a lot. Um. I'm, I'm, I, I like the story at the least. I'm on chapter two of part six. Yeah, <laughs> you're getting places. Uh, no, at least you finished part five. That's a bit of a story. I finished part five like, uh, way before I finished the anime. I really like part five. I wouldn't say it's my favorite. Part four is still my favorite. Part four, you four is really on that. Great. I know that's a controversial opinion. Is it? Uh, I think a lot of people like really part four. I I know a lot of people like part four uh, as Akira being the villain. Oh no, I, I, don't, I love the weird kind of Twin Peaks vibe. Of that it's series. so cool it's that so it's good. just like sh- town shenanigans. Well, like, I love that. Straight up was written when Twin Peaks was like the yeah. biggest shit in Japan. And there's no fucking doubt in my mind that film nerd fucking Hirohiko Araki wasn't watching Twin Peaks. Of course not. It, he's it's very Lynchian and interesting. He's I got like an alien thing. character. Yeah, who just is there is he, and then isn't yeah. until the end, and then he's like, "I'm gonna hang out in this homeless tower with you, homeless stand man." It's so which weird. is the weirdest set. Oh man, it's so good. Part four is so the good. Tower. Yeah, the electrical tower. It's so good. Fucking so silly. Oh, cool. I love that series, but um. But yeah. I mean, I, I feel like the consensus, in terms of people who have only watched the anime, is usually part three is the best. 
And you're like, really? Yeah, okay. Well, I well, everyone I've talked to, a lot of people are like, part three's my favorite. And I'm like, okay, well, you're I understand it, it being your favorite for like nostalgia's sake. But I don't understand. Because it's cause where stands are introduced and yeah. it's a really high level. Four I, is the best. I read part three when it was first being published in English, like way back when. Yeah. Like, when I have some of those original Shonen Jump part three volumes. Uh, I think I have two or three of them lying around my house. But, um, like, yeah. I I really liked part three because it was my intro to JoJo. Yeah. But I always preferred, like, I don't know, just the later stuff. It gets yeah. better. And you, you have those better. weird people who are like, JoJo died after uh, Battle Tendencies, and you're like, what? I mean, Battle Fantasy is great. It's good, but no. So part two's awesome. Part two's great. I, I, I'm not saying it's bad. I'm just but saying, yeah, like, no, like, what no. the fuck? No, there's so much more, dude. Fuck Hamon. Hamon's dumb. I love it. But it's, it's, it's just so Fist of the North it's Star. So dumb. Yeah. It's fucking. Anyway, it's, yeah. I mean, part one and two are just Fist of the North Star by the Europe. Uh, but I've seeing people think that the Omaiwa oh Mushinderu meme is from JoJo, and you're like, no. It's not. It's. It's Hakutu no Ken. But, uh, yeah, that shit was pretty good like i i just i like ruby a lot i think it's a it's a series that just every season improves its quality yeah because how did we go how did we get to jojo uh through fighting games uh but Fuck. all right i really do enjoy ruby i think it's a pretty excellent series and it's underrated yeah uh, it's, i think people just kind of have this impression of it based on its first two seasons of what it looks like, how it sounds, yeah. what the kind of writing is like. And, I mean, as somebody who has literally been the last week made it all the way up to the most current season, uh, season six. Are uh, they short episodes? They're fit. They, the shortest are like six minutes. The longest are 22, like a full episode of TV. Okay, yeah. So it the seasons it vary wildly in terms of length. But um, now they're usually fixed at about... 14 episodes and each episode is about 15 to 20 minutes. Can you tell each? where the money goes in? No. Nope. Like in terms of No, nope, because it all looks good now. Okay. Cool. Cuz it all looks good now. Okay, cool. It Polygon Pictures level of quality at some points. So yeah. I'm not kidding. Sick. Uh it's the first two seasons. I mean, I think the money was in the fight scenes. Yeah. The fight scenes well, and the fight choreography were amazing cuz that's what Monty Ohm was known yeah. for was doing those dead fans. That's my favorite thing movies. about anime though. It's just like like you can see it, I I think most blatantly probably for me in Neon Genesis, oh, yeah, where you'll have right. stills of forest and cicadas and no background music, and then the fight scenes are beautiful and oh, yeah. like and fluid, fluid and, and just amazing. Yeah, uh, and I think uh, that has a nostalgia factor in terms of like every time I see any other anime kind of doing the same thing, where like non fight scene or like where you can tell where the money went, you know, like. I started when we started our rewatch. We started watching with my friend Alex. Yeah. Uh, and we sat down, and he's like, "Same Alex or the other Alex?" Okay, yeah. I, I was like, there are many Alexes, uh, but my friend Alex Rakabocha. Uh, we sat down. Follow his art on Instagram, by the way. He's fucking good. But I will do that. We sat down and we watched the first couple episodes of the first season. And I'm like, look, I know it's a slog. You get through season one, and like, isn't that most gets... animes? Well. Ruby is a special case because it's a independently produced CGI animated series in the style of anime, but written and directed entirely by Americans. Yeah, it's a different kind of vibe. And to quote him, it looked like dog shit when the characters talked to one another. The lip flapping was out of sync. The voice actors still hadn't settled into the roles Sonic because adventure. almost all of the voice actors, for the most part, are non professionals or people who are just rooster teeth employees. Yeah. So they were settling into their roles, but by the time season six rolls around, which is where I am now, and me and Jera and Dex have been streaming it together pretty much every night for the last two weeks, it's good. Like, the voice actors have totally fit in with their roles at this point. The writing is consistently better. The emotion and the acting and the performances are, are is great. The animation matches the tone of the performance nicely. The fight scenes look consistently excellent uh and the the drama the writing everything is great like it's it's an it's a great fun popcorn show that has just enough deep lore to get into yeah that you can have fun speculating and talking and discussing it but not so much that you feel inundated or intimidated by the amount of extra 
I guess, extra narrative material you have to consume in order to fully contextualize the world that they're in. So it's a great show. And yeah, just getting to watch it all over again and getting to watch all of it back to back instead of season to season yeah, as I yeah, have yeah. the last couple of years, like binging it is a really different experience. You see how there's stuff mentioned in season one that is super fucking relevant now in the current season. Nice. And lots and lots of like lampshading to future events yeah, 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 yeah. and foreshadowing. And it's really, really so fun. like that is the best yeah. video. It, it goes to show you that when Rooster Teeth says Monty Ohm had literally planned the first 10 seasons of the show already. That's good. They're That's not what fucking you should kidding. Do. That's he, what you should there do. is shit that is happening now Unless that, was, Rocky. that was mentioned in the fucking first season. And Monty has literally not been alive for years. Yeah. And this shit is still coming up. So it goes to show you how much of his work and his creative eye in his writing is still, yeah. in, you know, a backbone of the show. And it's nice. It's I, I've really had so enjoyed anything my time after today. season ten is going to be garbage. But you're still in the clear for now. I don't. I think they're just going to end it at season ten. I mean, they're they better. They're at, they're at seven seasons. It's a long show, and they can let it die. Like there's once the main narrative comes to a conclusion, you know, kill it with dignity. Yeah. But yeah, so that was a really really good experience, and yeah. uh, that's kind of been what the last three weeks have been. Just lots of. Picking up on shit that I haven't played, trying out new TV shows, some working, some for me, not working so much. But uh, yeah, just a, getting back into the swing of things. Nice. What about you? Um, I have been on a mild nostalgia binge, uh, a mild learning how to make video games binge. Ah, uh, that's a difficult. So yeah, I've been trying to teach myself because I want to get into the video game industry. Unless this thing picks up and we start making at least as much money as I'm making now. <laughs> <laughs> Which I doubt will ever happen. This coupled with my streaming. Like if this makes like half of what I make and my streaming makes the other half and be fine, but you could I, I don't yeah. think I don't think it'll work out. I think this is just a fun pastime. Exactly. I, agree I don't too. really expect much from this. Um so I need to burst into uh the video game industry. And the other day I worked a uh Saturday night shift in the kitchen and had a flash and was like, you know what? No, I need to, I need to, I need to buckle down. I need to teach yourself. Yeah, I need to get. I can't. You gotta get. I can't do this. You gotta get educated. I gotta get motivated, as Virgil oh, yeah. would say. Um. So yeah, I uh, I've been doing a lot of that. I'm gonna make a small project. No, I'm not gonna talk about it. No, okay. Gonna, All right. It. Keep it secret. Yeah. I keep it secret. Something's coming. I don't know when. That's mostly oh, yeah. why I don't want to talk about it. Uh, but, but anyway. The seeds uh, are there. Yeah. They are the something seeds. is happening. Um, this, coupled with the fact that uh, my other friend, Anthony, who we will probably have on for a podcast eventually. Yeah. Because uh, he's a cool dude. But we're also going to start doing Let's Plays uh, very regularly. Yeah. As soon as he gets a laptop. Uh, which is next time he sees his mom. Oh, <laughs> so there we go. So that'll be coming soon. Nice. Uh, so those are projects in the work. Other than that, I've been streaming Final Fantasy VII. Uh, not much of it, because streaming has only really picked up in the last like two, three weeks. Yeah. Uh, How far I just, have you gone? I just so left far. Midgar. You just, oh, well. So I did the bicycle. So you played the, the entire remake. Yeah, I, I, <laughs> yeah, I played the motorcycle thing. And that was great. Yeah, it's fun, isn't it? Dude, I was not expecting it. I was kind of disappointed because as I was streaming it, uh, I was trying to figure out the controls, <laughs> and then it crashed, and I had to redo the whole like two boss fights. You have to do before oh, it. Fuck. I was like, God damn it! But uh, it was still cool. Okay. And then I left Midgard, and I was like, Okay, I'm gonna go to sleep now. <laughs> um, I've also been streaming Metal Wolf Chaos. Yes, now which, that I've seen. That shit is nuts. Fucking, uh, yeah, sorry about that first video. It sounded bad. <laughs> um, a second one's also bad because the TV echoes in through my mic. Uh, uh, so yeah. I'm, still, I'm still trying to figure out the sound volumes on that. But, uh, yeah, no, been streaming Metal Wolf. That game is amazing in the worst ways, or it's bad in the best ways. I can't it's tell. both. And, uh, yeah. It's a little bit um, of both. I, I can see why FromSoft didn't want it to come over. I'm disappointed that it took this long, and I'm super glad that Devolver Digital for like six years, maybe more, 
punched the shit out of FromSoft until they were like, yeah, fine, we'll release it, fine, fine, fine. Um, that game's good. Voice acting is impeccable. Probably the peak of all voice acting in any video game. It's so funny. Uh, Metal Gear Solid, take note. It reminds me of Revengeance. It's just so it's over ridiculous. the top. It's so over the top. It's so funny. My favorite is every bef uh, before every mission, your secretary lady gives you a call sign for the thing. And before she says the name of the mission, there's like a really out of place, goofy drum roll. And you're like, oh, it's so good. It's whenever I, um, whenever I see a game fun. like Metal Wolf Chaos, I think this is like, this is containing in the legacy of games like Bad Dudes. Yeah. You know, where it's yeah, just, yeah, 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 yeah. it's so over the top and so it's, what it is. Like, it leans too hard into what America is that it's not even wrong. Yeah, you know, no, exactly. What America is. It's, it's barely self parody at, at a point. Yeah, because it, it was supposed It's a parody game that's too close. Yeah. It's an onion article that you confuse for sure. Yeah, exactly. It's ridiculous, but uh, it's super fun. Uh, love the shit out of that. I'm also planning a couple of things to stream. Um, after Metal Wolf Chaos ends up uh, finishing. Because that last stream went to shit. I died twice and then the game, <laughs> the game crashed in a way that I've never seen a game crash where the overlay was still over the screen, but I could get to the, like, I had the task bar. So like that bottom purple bar right there I still had, but Metal Wolf Chaos was still on the screen. I tried to Alt F for it, it wouldn't do anything. I tried to go into Task Manager, but the Task Manager window was hidden by oh, Metal Wolf chaos, chaos, like I just, I had to end the stream by turning off the computer. Fuck. It was fucked. I was like, all right, well, this, I, whatever. Um, so yeah, that went terribly. <laughs> oh my god. I made no progress. That stream might as well not have happened. Um, That's. <laughs> it was bad. Oh my god. I didn't watch anything. Nothing of note. You didn't watch Stranger Things. No, I finished that for that one episode. Yeah, that's that true. Oh. Stranger Things not great. It's too bad. Just, the more time that I have to think about it, the more the I hate it. You the like more it. I hate it's it. Fun. Um, I do want to talk about one game that I played last night for the first time ever. Yes. Which was uh, Resident Evil. I I always almost say Metal Gear Survive, but it's Resident Evil Survivor, which is a canon in between Resident Evil. Uh, Two that's supposed to set up the plot for Resident Evil Code Veronica. So, yeah. yeah a yeah. game that I've never played. Um, I've never played Code Veronica. Well, Code Veronica has a problem wherein if you uh, fuck up and use too much ammo before a transition period from one place to another place in an airplane, you have fucked fuck. yourself. You, oh, you have to restart the whole game. Which is what happened to me, which is why I've never beat uh, Code Veronica. That's fucking ridiculous. Uh, but yeah. Uh, so, Metal Gear Survive is a... <sighs> big air quotes light gun game. <laughs> of Metal... Or, or no, fuck. Resident Evil. God, see? Yeah. Anyway, yeah. Resident Evil but Survivor But un unlike is... fucking Dark Side Chronicles and Umbrella Chronicles... It's bad. It's Yeah, because those games are fucking good. They're, well, they're fun. They're, they're playable. It's they're House playable. of the Dead, but Resident Evil. Okay, I love it. we were... We were two thirds through the game before I picked up any ammo. But your handguns are unlimited, so it's fine. But I was two thirds through the game before I picked up any ammo. Mm. Um, essentially, what it does is give you a reason for the tyrants, which no one asked for. Which nobody is, cares. We were stealing these teenager juices. I mean, it is practically the definition of giving unnecessary lore explanations yeah. to shit nobody cares about. We're giving these teenager juices to uh, monsters, and they're becoming these evil tyrants. Uh, which I mean makes sense because if you inject somebody full of teen juice, yeah, they will become evil. Oh, for sure. But. But it's just like no one needed to know this. You couldn't just let the tyrants be tyrants. You had to have a tyrant factory, which is what it's called. It's so it's dumb. Just entirely like, unnecessary. There was there was moments of the game that we were like laughing and just having fun because it was so dumb. But then there were other moments where you're just like sad and depressed, and we just weren't talking. And I was just going through the motions. The game structure is essentially you're in a room. There's two doors. One of them's locked. The other one leads you to a key. Mm. Get key, unlock door, two doors, and you're like, oh god, okay, 
That's the whole game. This is not um, what we meant when we said the game was to have branching pathways. You... Okay, yeah, your guy has amnesia, so immediately is like, what the fuck's going on? Uh, and he thinks he's an evil man that works for Umbrella, but he turns out to not be evil man. He was a detective sent by, canonically, Leon S. Kennedy's. This takes place, like, three days after the Raccoon City, like, incident, which makes no sense, because Leon was a fucking rookie cop. Uh, and there's no way that he would have known There's no way he would have known about this shit. island. Any and there is also... He's a rookie cop. Why are you going to be like, hey, detective friend, can you go check out this... Like, if you said Chris Redfield, I would have been like, okay, maybe. <laughs> maybe, But no, yeah, exactly. Leon maybe. S. Kennedy, whatever. Uh, fuck this game. It's dumb. He's some bullshit. Um... You fight the final boss, you beat him, and you escape on a helicopter, and then he ends up being on the helicopter, right, with you, and it's, like, dramatic. But what happens is you shoot the missile, and the first one hits him, but doesn't explode, because if it explodes, the helicopter goes down. So it pushes him away, and then the second missile comes off and hits the first missile, and he double explodes. And then... Yeah. It's fucking stupid. It's canon. It's fucking it's stupid. Canon. It no, was a it's bad bullshit. game. It's I was so is. pissed last night, I made a Twitter post. I... Posted in the Discord and then I, I cried. No, I didn't cry, bitch. It was bad. Uh, yeah. Other than that, I think that pretty much overshadowed my last three weeks. I'm still mad about it, obviously. Oh yeah. Uh, I've been replaying Kingdom Hearts because it's a good game, and I, I miss, I miss it. So I'm doing Kingdom Hearts one, two, three, but there like go. very slowly in my off time when I'm like, I don't know what I want to play. <laughs> uh, and now we can delve into the news. The news. And uh, we'll do that quick. There is news. There's there's small. There's news. some interesting news. Small news. Um, we can. You want to start know. with that? We don't know enough about this. We can cover this next week when I okay. research the fucking thing. That makes it funny. There. So there is this game coming out called Arcade Spirits. It's a uh, romance visual novel that takes place in a universe where the video game crash didn't happen. In and, the 80s. and it is apparently coming to Switch. Which it makes is. me very excited. Uh, it's already on Steam. Yeah. And I'm downloading the demo literally as we speak. Uh, it looks gay. It's, yeah, it is basically. Which is the best way to do a, a visual novel? Queer, retro futuristic dating sim visual novel. Cyberpunk tones, because there's a girl coming out of the phone. Yeah, and it's Siri is set, set in a world where the video game crash of 83 never occurred. Yeah, Siri is a Cortana. That's so cool. Uh, I, I, honest, I honestly can't wait to play it. Look I'm, fucking I'm, fun. I'm gonna, I think I'm going to stream the demo tonight. Actually. Because it looks, looks good. Yeah, no, it looks, it looks like really, really excellent. Uh, you get to customize your own character. You can be fucking whatever. You can be him... Uh, her, they, you can be white, black, you can... It's it's good. It's a fully customizable It's, it's, it's really nice to have a uh, romance visual novel that doesn't assume you're a faceless, brown-haired... Otaku. Otaku. Yeah. It's totally... Well, like, like, at, at least they're not making you be like... You know, like, I played Katawa Shoujo. Yeah. I, I like that game. The girls are good. It is a fun dating sim. It's cute. I mean, there's good dating sims. But it's but also kind of, like, I hate that the main character has, like, a voice. Yeah. I, I hate that he has, like, a face. Yeah. It felt impersonal. I, I You know what? I, a game that I really did like, though, was um, Butterfly Soup, the dating game Butterfly Soup. It's a baseball-themed lesbian dating sim. Nice. And it's got a very cute art style. The girl that I get set up with in the first time that I played is, like, this hyper masculine kind of like butchy lesbian who likes to like beat shit up and like to like drop guns in like elementary Sick. school one of those kids yeah yeah. so anyway she was dope I instead liked, of I liked horse girl it was gun girl yeah she's like the opposite of the horse girls so I yeah her. and she like baseball that's coming uh curse of the sea rats looks fucking amazing yes curse of the sea rats is a hand-drawn ratoidvania because you play as rats yeah and um, it's it's from P2 Studios. Yeah. Essentially, the story sets up in a uh, way that you are a group of pirates that gets cursed by uh, evil, evil forces that uh, fucking turn you into rats. Yeah. And the... And you gotta figure that shit out. The animation for the... You know what it kind of reminds me of? You know, like, how Cersei in the Odyssey turns people into fish? Yeah. Or not to fish, to pigs. 
It's kind of got that vibe, but yeah, it's got this yeah. beautiful hand-drawn sprite. It style. looks. Uh, it looks like it could have been a game in. Oh, fuck, what's that game? The adventure game from the nineties was on PC. Monkey Island. Point and click. Yes. It has a Monkey Island. It has aesthetic. a Monkey yeah. Island. Maybe that's just the pirate. 2D yeah. sprite hand drawn animation yeah. kind of look, but I mean clearly yeah. it's not going to be a point and click. No, it's a it's a platformer. I mean it's uh, a Ratchetvania, yeah. yeah. as they so. say. But it's got a it's got a great aesthetic so far. But yeah. I think the backgrounds kind of look a little shitty. Yeah, they look a little off. The but animated I mean, sprites are so beautiful that you kind of don't ignore it. Yeah, it I mean it's matter. just the water. The water looks very uh, unreal. Well, it looks. I think the environments look flat and the color palette's a little drab. Yeah, but. I mean, if it, I, I haven't played it yet, so I don't yeah. know if it all. Works and like, these are all it. screenshots from that one level, except for this one. Yeah, exactly. And like, this seems a little better than the shipwreck level, which I can only assume will be the first level. Yeah, exactly. So, so it, it looks like it could be shaping up to be something really interesting. Yeah. Um, do we, do we want to go into the Cooking Mama thing? No, I don't know enough about it yet. Okay, because that's, that's a whole. Unless thing you know that. enough about the. Uh. I have an understanding of what happened. Okay, well, okay, so they announced a new Cookie Mama game. Yeah, it's the first one in a number of fucking years, yeah. because um, it's coming to it, PlayStation basically it, it got sold as an IP to another company, uh, and people are excited about it initially because, hey, it's Cookie Mama, people love this game. So yeah, they're, they're, they're good games. They're great games. But under the covers... Mm, there's... No, I don't think there's anything Something there. a little fishy about it, and it's that... Apparently, the game can, like, use your data to mine Bitcoin. Yeah. Which, which is... I, I don't know how it works. Weird. So, like, essentially you buy this game and you're helping people make money play uh, to fucking... Hold on. It's really weird. Uh, hold on. It's like a crypt... It's like a cryptocurrency extractor. Yeah. Okay, let's... Is it blockchain? Let's see. Uh, Click the model home on the Switch. It claims to be the first major console to release DRM free. No, it's not DRM. What? Uh, see, this is why I didn't want to do it. This, <laughs> I don't know. Cooking this sounds mama. bad. Crypt. Yeah, <laughs> crypto. Uh, just look at the Twitter post. Yeah, let's see. So, okay. Oh, yeah. Um, um, Blockchain-powered video game publisher Planet Digital Partners today announced the details around its first portfolio game, Cooking Mama Cook Coming Home for the Nintendo Switch. Uh, a reboot of the top-selling, family-friendly cooking game franchise, Cooking Mama. The game will be available fall 2019 and will be the first game to integrate blockchain technology into major consoles. Oh, okay. So we can skip this, because I don't think this matters. This is but, just like 20 yeah. million units, who cares? Essentially, each purchased copy of the game has unique IDs which will be managed directly through the game's internal wallet storage. Players will be able to focus on Cooking Mama's user experience rather than cryptographic key management. <sighs> Private key enabled balanced DRM. Traditional DRM limits the ability to copy games. While well, private keys on blockchain protocols allow easy registration. These combined items provide greater proof of ownership to legitimate owners of the game while allowing them to resell games both digitally and in traditional retail outlets. I don't know what this means. This is a word salad. Anyway, something about it is bad and people are mad. It's fucking weird. Yeah, there's a gif of a guy just kind of looking at all the equations. This is kind of how I feel reading that. Yeah. I don't know what any of this shit means. I'm a layman. Uh, maybe you can make money playing Cooking Mama. Maybe you're making someone else money by... I don't know. Uh, this Either way, way, it's this a little... This is why I wanted to look it up. A, a little, little strange. More. But also, as we were talking about, uh, River City Girls yeah, got well, a new trailer a little recently. We took care of that. With Kyoko, and she looks adorable. She's got a blanket ball. She's got a dab attack. She she's is, voiced by Kira Buckland. She's baby, essentially. Yeah. She, oh, so pretty much she's baby. She's baby. She's I'm baby. baby. Uh, well, actually, I'm baby. Uh, actually, I'm baby. Anyway, she's baby, and it's really cute. Yeah, uh, I'm so I, excited for that game. We're going to stream that. Oh, yeah. yeah it looks like it's real lot of fun. Yes. Uh, uh, oh, yeah. Astral Change is coming out in uh, 
12 days. Yeah, and I'm going to get the shit out oh, of Oh, God. Yeah. You lucky bastard. And I think tomorrow switch. I'm going to go and get Fire Emblem Three Houses, so I will have that. Oh, it looks so fucking good. I know. I'm so jealous. I cannot wait to get every line in the game. Fully voiced dialogue. Yeah. I can't wait. So I'm really excited for that. Well. But uh, that's uh, definitely something I'm looking forward to. Oh, yeah. But, um... I guess apart from that, uh, that'll be the end of today's uh, game Pooks. That's a motherfucking episode. Yeah. Uh, I like. I feel like I had more to talk about about my week, and I'll probably remember it after we're done. But fucking Survivor ruined me. Yeah, Survivor ruined your, me. Your brain it became a mush. My, I like. I wanted. I'm. I'm gonna look up who the writer was and see what else they worked on. Which hopefully nothing. Hopefully. Hopefully. I don't know how Capcom released that game. There's, oh man, the music in that game is so bad too. Oh, it's it's reminiscent of Director's Cut Resident Oh, like, yes, just, there's one part that we put down the controller because we were laughing so hard. And it was like boss theme music. And it was like, I'll try, I'll try and find it after we're done recording and let you listen to it. But I'll I'll stick it, I'll stick it at the end of the recording. Yeah, we'll put it, we'll put it at the end because it. Yeah, I don't think Capcom is gonna have a claim on that. It's so funny. Anyway, that's uh, amazing. Check out my stream, Scratch Me Silly. I stream Thursdays and Fridays now, uh, fairly regularly. And this Thursday is gonna be Final Fantasy VII. Follow me on Twitter, I guess. Oh yeah, me too. I'm Twitter active. I'm always if you're looking for me, it's scratch me silly. Yeah, and if you're looking for me, it's new low art punk. Uh, and uh, look out for new episodes uh, coming at you Sundays now because yes, well, guess what? I mean, it's maybe free Sundays. Mondays, I guess. Oh, okay, well, we'll on Mondays, Sundays, yes. Come but on. we will record them Sundays. Yes, because I have Sundays off from work, and it is nice. And I do too. It's the first time in five years I have Sundays off. Nice. I've never had Sundays off in a fucking long time. Well, so happy Sunday. <clears throat> it's so nice to have one day of the proper weekend free. Uh, but anyway, thank you very much and have yourselves a good uh, day. Uh, if you have any yeah, if questions, right. maybe uh, message us on Twitter. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Twitter. Hit, us, hit us up with questions so we can have a question yeah, mailbag. That would be fun. That would be fun. Uh, we'll, we have an email, but I don't remember which one's the right one right now. So we'll oh, I know which one is. Are you sure? Yeah. Is it it's Kans- KZ? Yes. Yeah. It's game punks with a kz all one word p-u-n-k-z cast at gmail.com which is a little confusing since we're getting yeah game punks with an x but uh right, right. <laughs> i think that was our bad i think there was a miscommunication where i made game yeah. punks gmail and then you made the other one yeah but anyway whatever the one with the kz will be the valid one so yeah. there we go bye see y'all